With the removal of basic auth approaching soon, we'll need to switch away from it to continue using IMAP programmatically alongside Office 365. Unfortunately, the Microsoft documentation on this is quite lacking. The only good information I could found when researching this video was from this guy called CodeRex, so go check out his video. The first step will be for us to register an Azure application to give us the proper permissions. So open up the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and from here we'll head over to Azure Active Directory and click on App Registrations. Now I'm just going to call my application IMAP or 2 and I'm going to click register. Here we'll make a note of these three variables as we'll need them later. For now though, we'll add API permissions to the application. So I'm just going to remove the default user.read and we're going to click on add permissions, then APIs my organization uses, search for Office 365 and choose exchange online with application permissions. And from here we can get the IMAP.accessAs app. There's also an option for POP3 in case you need that for a legacy system. Then we'll grant admin consent for the application and this will require you to be locked in with an admin account. So in case your account isn't one, this would be the time where you would need to ask someone else to grant the access. Now I know we'll need to create a client secret as well, but when doing it here we can only choose a 24 month lifetime for it. Whereas if we use PowerShell, we can create secrets that last 99 years. So with our graph application made, we'll for this next part need to open up PowerShell with administrator access and we'll install two modules if you don't already have them. The first module is Azure AD and the second module is Exchange Online Management. Then we'll use Connect Azure AD, log in with an admin account for your tenant and then we'll use Connect Exchange Online and do the same. Now we're connected through our tenant to Azure Active Directory and Exchange Online with PowerShell, giving us access to a whole bunch of commands. The first thing we'll do after connecting is to create a variable containing the Azure AD service principle that belongs to the Azure application we created in the last step. We'll do this by calling get Azure AD service principle and here's a search string we'll input the name of the application which in my case was IMAP OAuth 2. Then we'll call new service principle using the app ID and object ID from the variable we just created and then assign it a display name. What this does is create a service principle in Exchange Online that we can assign permissions to and it will carry over to our Azure application. Because of this, we can then assign the service principle full access to our mailbox and we can gain access to it in our program later. We'll do this by calling the add mailbox permission command line. Here we'll pass in the mailbox we want access to as the identity, our object ID from our app, as the user and full access as the access rights. The service principal can have access to multiple mailboxes in case you need it. Just use the same command and change the identity as needed. Now, as mentioned, the last thing we'll need to do in PowerShell is create a secret for our Azure application, which we'll use later to connect. So let's create a variable called start date and set it to get date. Then we'll create a variable called end date and assign the value of start date plus 99 years. Since we're still connected to Azure Active Directory, we can use the commandlet new Azure AD application password credential, which takes the object ID of our Azure application, a custom key identifier, which is just a display name, a start date and an end date. Now the value you get here as an output is the secret. So make sure to save it as you won't be able to view it again. Now we're done with the PowerShell part and we can start coding. But before we fully dive into C-Sharp, I want to show you how you can get the access token you need using any language. In C-Sharp, people get the token in quite a few different ways, but we can just post to a URL as any other API and get the token from there. So I just wanted to show you here. You just want to make sure that you pass in the parameters in the body as form data or form URL encoded. And the grant type has to be client credentials and the scope, the outlook URL you see here. This Outlook URL is acquired as the scope if you're using an application. So now you know how to get the access token and you can do it your preferred way. Personally, this is how I'd do it. I'll make sure I can access the variable we need to post. Here I've just stored them in a separate file for security purposes. You'd probably want to do this differently in the real application. Then we'll create a method for getting the access token, which will be a static async task returning an access token model, which is just the model I've created with the four values I expect to receive from the call. Then we'll define the URL to post to and create a dictionary with our values to post. Then we'll create an HTTP client to use in a using statement and then call post async on it and pass in the data. Then we'll return the content populated into an access token model. 
for the IMAP part of our program. I'll be using a library called MakeIt, as it's free and supports OAuth 2. We'll start off by defining the mail we want to connect to, the host, which will always be outlook.office365.com, and the port, which will be 993. This is all defined as by the Microsoft documentation. And for my demonstration here, I'll create a method for connecting. I'll call it IMAP connect async, and it will take an IMAP client an access token and the folder access level. The folder access level is what tells it if we can read, write or both. I'll create a new SASL mechanism or two variable here and pass in the mail we want to connect to and then the access token that will be used instead of the password. We'll then call connect async on the IMAP client and pass in the host, port and what security to use. The default for Microsoft here will be TLS 1.2. Next up is authenticating using the auth 2 variable. Now in my case, I'll just open the inbox. Here you could of course open a different folder. Just be aware that you have to open a folder before you can read any data from the mailbox. Then we can create a method here that returns all messages from the inbox. It will be of type task and return a list of my messages, which is the format we get emails in when using MailKit. So we'll create a new IMAP client and use it in using statement. Then call our IMAP connect async method. After this point, we connect it to the mailbox and can access data using the IMAP client. So here we'll get all unique IDs of the mails in my inbox by calling search async and passing in a search query for all. Then we'll loop through them and call get message async, pass in the unique ID of the mail and add it to our messages list. Then we'll disconnect and return the list. Using almost the same code, we can create a method to give us the first unwritten email message in my inbox. Like last time, we'll create an IMAP client, we'll connect to it. We can then access client.inbox.firstunread get that message asynchronously and return it. To put it all together, all we need to do is call the get access token method on our API handler, then call get all messages on our mail handler, and then we can print the subject of each message. We can do the same thing with the first unread message. Let's call the get method for that and print the subject. We can then run our program and see what it prints. Now, if I show you here in Outlook Online, you can see that it printed the correct things. I've just used the shared mailbox in this case, but you can use an ordinary mailbox as well. And that's it. That's how simple it is to use OAuth 2 with Microsoft 365 and C Sharp. In case this was useful, feel free to subscribe, like the video, and if you have any comments, I'd love to hear them.